all right hi everybody so today we are working on merchandising entries we're using Kimmel Wagen and Gies's fundamentals of financial management and um, we will be working on problem 5-1a so if you don't recall the entries for merchandising please go back into this playlist and see our merchandising explainer or our chapter 5 explanation video which will help you lay the foundations for how we're going to be attempting this particular problem now, if we read problem 5-1a from the Kimmel Wake and Kiesa book, um, it basically says, Ready, Set, Go, Co. distributes suitcases to retail stores and extends credit terms of 110 net 30 to all of its customers. This basically means that when we sell to our customers, we'll give them a 1% discount if they pay within 10 days, else they have to pay the net amount within 30 days. At the end of June, Ready, Set, Go's inventory consisted of suitcases costing $1,200. These are starting inventory. During the month of July, the following merchandising transactions occurred. And here we'll go one by one. So on the 1st of July, purchased suitcases on account for $1,500 from trunk manufacturers, FOB destination terms, 210 net 30. The appropriate party also made a cash payment of $100 for freight on this date. Now there's lots of information in this. We're gonna take it step by step. So if we purchase suitcases, we are the buyer. If we are the buyer who've purchased something, the main entry that we're going to do is going to be an increase in our inventory. And because we can see from the credit terms over here that this is on account, so it will be against an account payable. So the first things first. Now, we also know that we've purchased this from a company called Trunk Manufacturers. And we're just going to go ahead and write that down over here. And we're going to note down. Now, this is entirely up to you. I tend to do this because it creates a system of clarity for me. I like to identify the company that I'm working with and the credit terms because it helps me solve as I move forward. So 210 net 30. Okay, now this will help me keep in mind as I move forward through this question. Now, what are the amounts? So it's 1500 to be debited here and 1500 to be credited here. Okay. Now, the next point to keep in mind is FOB destination. Under FOB destination, if you go back to our merchandising explainer video, you'll understand that the FOB destination indicates that the seller is responsible for all transportation charges. And so when they make the $100 cash payment for freight on this date, we have no entries here. And so we, we sort of skip that part. It's not required as an entry here. We've done our entry. Now we come over to 3rd of July. So 3rd of July is sold suitcases on account to Satchel World for $2,200 and the cost of suitcases sold is $1,400. When we sell these suitcases, that means we're the seller. When we make a sale, there's a double entry here that's going to take place. And uh, because we sell everything to our customers on credit terms, it's going to be an accounts receivable uh, to our sales revenue. And so the amount that we sell it at is $2,200. So debit 2200, credit 2200. And against this, we also have a cost of goods sold and a inventory decrease. And so the cost that it was for us was $1,400 as indicated in this statement. Again, I like to identify who we sold it to because this helps me remember the calculations that I'll be dealing with up ahead. And our credit terms that we extended to them were to 110 net 30. Then on the 9th of July, um, paid trunk manufacturers in full. So now when we pay trunk manufacturers, I don't have to worry about going back through this data. I'll just look over here for trunk manufacturers, 210 net 30. So first and foremost, when we make a payment, the entry is simply going to be a decrease in my accounts payable, a decrease in my cash. And against this, in case I'm able to avail a discount, it'll be a decrease in my inventory. We'll see in a moment if this is going to be necessary. Now let's do our calculation here. I'm gonna do this calculation so you can see what's happening. Um, we made this purchase on the 1st of July and on the 12th, sorry, on the 9th of July, on the 9th of July, this is odd, I apologize. All right, here we go. This is not gonna be a fraction, this is gonna be a date. Here we go. Okay, so, um, whoa, okay. So odd, let's, get, let's go ahead and um, leave this out and I'm going to just put in a date over here that says 
my apologies for the distraction so this is uh the 9th of july here we go okay so on the 9th of july we bought these from trunk manufacturers on the 1st of july and we're making the payment on the 9th that means within nine days we have a discount that we can avail within 10 days so we're going to be able to get that discount in this case this means out of 1500 dollars we're going to be able to to get a discount of two percent so two percent of fifteen hundred dollars is essentially equal to thirty dollars and that is the value of our discount so in our inventory we're going to write thirty dollars now we owe them fifteen hundred dollars in total so if we take fifteen hundred minus thirty that means we've given them a cash payment of fourteen seventy and that is how we know that all of the amounts add up now after the ninth it's on the on to the twelfth of January of sorry of July 12th of July and that says received payment in full from Satchel World now Satchel World whom we sold to on the 3rd of July they've paid us the money and again we want to compare the dates over here because we were going to give them a 1% discount if they pay within the first 10 days and they have done exactly that they're paying us within the first 10 days so when we receive a payment as a seller the entry is going to be an accounts receivable sorry i apologize just a moment we're going to be receiving a cash payment and we'll be giving them some form of a sales discount and against this their receivables account will decrease and so the calculation that we want to do over here is essentially calculate of the total amount that they were to give us satchel world was required to give us twenty two hundred dollars and we want to give a 1% discount to them, so that's $22 in total. In our discount column, we're gonna write 22. In our receivables column, we're going to write 2200. And so 2200 minus 22 will result in 2178. There we go. On the 8th, 17th of July, on the 17th of July, we sold suitcases on account to Lady Gogo for $1,400. We made a sale. Whenever we make a sale, the entry will always be accounts receivable, two sales revenue, and cost of goods sold, two inventory. Okay. So now in our accounts receivable and sales revenue, we're going to put in the amount of the sales. It's $1,400 and it's $1,400. Under cost of goods sold, we'll put in what the suitcases actually cost us. That is $1,010 and $1,010. And quick notes over here for the company. So Lady Go Co, Lady Go Go. Interesting. And our terms and conditions are 110, net 30 as originally specified. Okay, moving forward after the 17th, on the 18th of July, we have purchased suitcases on account for $1,900 from holiday manufacturers. Whenever we make a purchase, the entry is going to be an inventory to an accounts payable. And in this particular case, we have bought from holiday manufacturers We've bought merchandise worth $1,900. And um, FOB Shipping Point. Now remember, FOB Shipping Point indicates that we, the buyer, are responsible for the transportation cost. And when we pay for transportation, we incorporate that into our inventory cost and it is paid against cash. So what is the cost of transportation? $125. That's 125 now the terms and conditions that holiday manufacturers give gives us for the credit sale are outlined over here 110 net 30 so we'll also write that over here 110 net 30. there's on the 18th of july then on the 20th of july we have received $300 credit, including freight for suitcases returned to holiday manufacturers. Whenever there is a return, it's the exact opposite of the sale. So in this case, this will be accounts payable, will be debited. And you can see the entry right over here for holiday manufacturers. So accounts payable will be debited. 
and our inventory will be credited and this was a credit of $300 and I, again I like to note which company we return to over here because this will help me track by the time that we make the actual payment. There we go. Okay, on the 21st, received payment in full from Lady GoGo. -Go. So when we see Lady GoGo, -Go, that was on the 17th, 17th to the 21st, they're going to be able to avail the discount when we receive the payment. That is cash, sales discount, and lastly, our accounts receivable. Okay, and this is from Lady GoGo, -Go, so we wanna calculate the discount. The discount is $1,400. 1% of that will be equal to $14 and so that is the amount of discount that we have $14 that we've given to our customer the total amount receivable from them was $1,400 we have no other entry over here against Lady GoGo -Go. so that means $1,400 minus $14 will give us $1,386 after the 21st we've got an entry for the 22nd of July which says sold suitcases on account to Vagabond for $22.50. Whenever we make a sale, the entry will always be accounts receivable. To sales revenue. And cost of goods sold. To inventory. There we go. Now we want to identify the company that we sold to be sold to Vagabond. And our terms and conditions are always 110, net 30. Now how many, how much did we sell the suitcases for? For 2250. So it's accounts receivable 2250 and sales revenue 2250, but those suitcases cost us 1350. That's 1350 debit for cost of goods sold and 1350 credit for inventory. Okay. Then we've got the 30th of July. And on the 30th of July, we paid holiday manufacturers in full. And we go back up to holiday manufacturers. So that is on the 20th that we received the inventory from them. Um, in fact, the 18th, I apologize, that was our return. The purchase was on the 18th. That means that we've exceeded the 10 day limit for their discount. We will not be receiving any discount. So our entry for payment in this particular case will be a decrease in our accounts payable and a decrease in our cash. Okay. Now, the calculation that we have to be careful with over here is we originally purchased inventory worth $1,900 from holiday manufacturers, but of that amount, we also, decre we also returned $300 worth of merchandise, which means that we, um, we give them a net amount of $1,600. And so this will be debited by $1,600 and credited by $1,600. So this is something that you have to keep in mind, but it's always very easy to track when you have the names written right over here in your notes. And then on the 31st of July, granted Vagabond $200 credit for suitcases returned, costing $120. When you as a seller receive a return, the entry is going to be almost the exact opposite of a sale, with one exception. So we want to put in a sales, returns, and allowances to be debited. And we'll have our accounts receivable to be credited. And this will be for the actual amount of the sales or the revenue. That's a $200 credit right there. And against this, we'll also have our inventory debited and our cost of goods sold credited. So inventory and cost of goods sold are going to change by $120. So $120 debit and $120 credit. And that, ladies and gentlemen, are the journalized transactions for merchandising entries under a perpetual inventory system. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below.